Xana Kernodal. Ethan Chapin. Kaylee Gonzalez. Madison Mogan. Hundreds gathered tonight for a vigil at the University of Idaho as family and friends remembered the four students killed near campus two and a half weeks ago. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme to News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Mark Hanrahan. The murders of these four students have captured international attention, but tonight's vigil was simply about honoring their memory and making space for the community to mourn. Among the speakers tonight, the parents of Ethan, Kaylee and Maddie. Creme 2's Kyle Simchuk was there tonight as they spoke about their children and their profound loss. An eerie silence inside the Kibbe Dome before tonight's vigil. The sound of buzzing and beeping metal detectors made more noise than the thousands of students who stood on the field to honor the life and memory of Ethan, Zanna, Kaylee, and Madison, who were found stabbed to death in this home off campus 17 days ago. It is a sad and unsettled time right now, but a family will come together to find reassurance and comfort in one another. Families of three of the victims were here tonight and found the courage and strength to share what they've lost. The circumstances that bring us here tonight, they're terrible. The hardest part, we cannot change the outcome. Ethan Chapin's mom says he was inseparable from his twin brother and sister. They even had their wisdom teeth removed on the same day. We are eternally grateful that we spent so much time with him. And I want to remind you that that's the most important message that we have for you and your families is to make sure that you spend as much time as possible with those people because time is precious and it's something you can't get back. Kaylee Consolvis' father, Steve, shared how the tragedy has shaken their family. We're going to get our justice. We're going to figure this stuff out. This community deserves that. And when I look at all you guys, there's only one way for this to get a little better, to heal a little bit. There's pain everywhere, is you're just gonna have to love each other. Madison Mogan's dad, Ben, says she was a happy kid and a perfect baby, the pride of his life. When I would meet people ever since she was first born, and when I meet people, I, they say, you know, tell me about yourself or you're just trying to get to know someone. The first thing I'd say is, well, my, I have this daughter and she's, she's, you know, here's a picture of her. She's, she's on the dean's list at, the, at college. Candles weren't allowed inside the Kibbe Dome, so students instead lit up their phones as the names of each student were read aloud during a moment of silence, a pillar of light representing each life lost. We don't know how long this investigation will take and we don't know the why behind this horrific act. But what we do know is we will all go through this together. Xana Cronodal's family was not here tonight. And you know, the elephant in the room, obviously the killer still out there, but were they here tonight at this vigil standing alongside students? That's a question some people are wondering. In Moscow, Kyle Simchuk, Krem2 News. And since the vigil ended, there's been an outpouring of support online from those who could not attend the event tonight. So take a look at these. These are virtual candles that people have been posting to remember Ethan, Kaylee, Matta, Maddie rather, and Zana. Meantime, it's been more than two weeks and still no suspect has been identified by investigators. Tonight, our sister station in Boise spoke with a Latah County prosecutor. His name is Bill Thompson, and right now his office is providing support to the investigation. He says right now investigators are purposefully keeping some information close to their chest because they believe it's integral to the investigation. Would you say that you guys have a suspect in mind or a person of interest in mind? To my knowledge, there is no specific person who is a suspect at this point. Uh, the investigators have um, explored a number of people who might have been persons of interest uh, and have essentially cleared each of them uh, through the investigation, and they're still working through that, pro that process. In your experience, it this amount of time doesn't necessarily mean a case is going to go cold. Absolutely not. We, we've had homicide cases in our county over the years uh, that have taken sometimes years to solve. I hope that this is not one of those. Uh, but if it takes that amount of time, then it takes that amount of time. Uh, we aren't going to stop 
uh, until we find out who's responsible for this and why it happened. I can certainly say that progress is being made, uh, that um, we are not losing momentum in the investigation. If anything, momentum continues to build. Uh, and the resources continue to be made available. They're rotating fresh investigators in uh, to make sure that everybody's on the top of their game as they're continuing to pursue this. Please don't get distracted by the conspiracy theories, and I'll just be perfectly blunt. The nonsense that some people put out there just to stir the pot, that hurts the families all the more. That hurts the community all the more. So use your common sense and to trust what's going on. The investigators really are doing the very best they can. Now, within the last few hours, the Moscow Police Department clarified a statement made by the Lataw County prosecutor in which the prosecutor said investigators had reason to believe that one of the victims in the home was in fact the target. Moscow Police clarifying, saying, quote, conflicting information has been released over the past 24 hours. Detectives do not currently know if the residents or any occupants were specifically targeted but continue to investigate, unquote. Meantime, law enforcement asking for any information that might help them in their case. Their tip line, 208-883-7180. You can also send an email to that address right there on your screen. Well, in other news today, it is a snowstorm that we haven't seen in two years with heavy snow falling across the inland northwest all day. These were all taken at different times throughout the last 24 hours. Things finally started to slow down earlier this evening, but that doesn't mean this storm is over. In fact, more snow could be on the way in the coming days and cold temperatures means that the snow that already fell not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy the Goo for more on what we can expect in the hours and days to come. Jeremy? Yeah, Mark, it's one of those ones where everything seems to be changing right now and there is a very active forecast as we go. Right now we sit at 34 degrees. That plays a big role in some of the melting across the region and the packing of the snow. All right. You have a couple snow reports on the screen, but let me read off a few more. This is where things get interesting. Athel, Idaho, 14 inches of snow. How about that one for you? Twisp, 15 inches. Okanagan, 12. Medellin Falls, 5 inches. How about uh, Chatteroy, 13 inches of snow. At the Spokane National Weather Service office, just shy of 10 inches, 9.9. .9. At the airport, officially 7.5, which is what goes in the books for us today. When it comes to our ongoing winter weather threat, we're now under a winter weather advisory in much of Washington and into parts of North Idaho. We've trimmed back a lot of that warning and a lot of that messaging, but that doesn't mean we're done with the snow just yet. We have a few more bands. A lot of this activity staying a little bit farther down to the south, a little rain snow mix in parts of the Washington Palouse. Here in Spokane, it's staying off to the north. Deer Park now out of it. We've had some strong bands. Expect that to kind of remain the case. On and off snow showers across the region as the low itself moves overhead. Head, I think we have the potential to pick up a bit more here in Spokane. Might get about an inch on top of what has already come down. One to two in Coeur d'Alene, two to three in St. Mary's, one to three in Moscow, Chihuahua, Sandpoint. The better part of a half a foot still on the way. My goodness. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. And with record snow across the city, road conditions certainly got a little dicey today before improving a bit tonight. We have the Krem 2 storm tracker out right now to bring us a live look at the road conditions right now. He is cruising along in the area of Manitou Park right now. They got hit with quite a bit of snow earlier today. I was there myself. If you had a vehicle with at least some ground clearance, not too big of an issue, but certainly a significant amount of snowfall. We'll check back in with the storm tracker a little bit later on in the broadcast. And while things are a bit clear with the fleet of snow plows making their way through the city, that wasn't the case earlier today. Krem 2's Janelle Finch has the details on a major semi-truck crash that actually shut down I-90 today. Snow today caused trouble for some drivers. All across our area, cars were sliding off the road and getting stuck in snow banks. Even a semi-truck took a hard turn on I-90, closing all eastbound lanes in that area. Around 1 p.m. today, Washington Department of Transportation reported a semi truck had overturned near the I-90 and US-2 interchange. The truck blocked all three I-90 eastbound lanes. WashDOT incident crews, state patrol and local police responded to the accident. After about 30 minutes, WashDOT crews were able to push the semi out of the way and open the right lane. Still, traffic was slow and backed up for about three exits. It wasn't until nearly four hours later, WashDOT was able to report it had cleared the collision. Westbound on I-90, just a few miles from the crash site, a state patrol officer was responding to an off-road vehicle. 
Crem 2 crews also found several cars getting stuck on the South Hill. As snow continues to fall and stick around, continue to be cautious on the roads. City plows are still working to clear off most of our city streets, so be sure to give them plenty of space to do their jobs so everyone can get to their destination safely. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Crime 2 News. Meantime, schools across the region have already started canceling or delaying classes in anticipation of tomorrow's road condition. Here's what we know at this hour. All Spokane Community College campuses will remain closed tomorrow. Also closed, Cataldo Catholic School, All Saints Catholic School, Forest Bird Charter Schools, St. Charles Catholic School, St. Thomas More Parish, Trinity Catholic Schools, and the West Bonner School District tonight. Several schools across the region have also announced two-hour delays, including Deer Park School District and the Valley School District. For a full list of closures and delays, just head to our website. That's, of course, creme.com. And we will continue to track the winter weather as it moves across the region. For the latest, you can visit us online anytime at creme.com, and be sure to tune in to Up With Creme starting at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning for the latest on any school closures and delays, also road conditions. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time, but don't go to bed just yet. Police are investigating after they say someone tried to rob two South Hill businesses tonight. We'll break down what we know coming up after the break. Plus, House lawmakers made a decision today regarding the looming rail worker strike. The decision and its impact coming up when we return in just 90 seconds.